Hello, my name is Josh, and I'm a big fan of the channel. I find the stories interesting and the narrator's voice calming. It's great storytelling. It is my go-to when I'm trying to go to bed. Scary things do not really scare me, I guess. I have always loved everything horror since I was just a child. I am simply weird like that. In 38 years of life, I have no interesting ghost or cryptid stories to share. Recently, though, I finally got in touch with an old friend of mine. With COVID in life, I have not seen him since the spring. He is a police officer for the local police department. We got lunch and he told me about an incident he had in October of this year. I begged him to let me write to you guys about it. I, I literally had goosebumps the entire time I heard this story. One, because of how close to where I lived it happened. And two, my friend is, str is straight as an arrow. He does not do any sort of things outside of maybe beer. He's the kind of guy that goes to your barbecue, sips the same beer for four hours, and leaves you the other eleven. No nonsense, boy scout kind of guy. He is not into that kind of stuff at all, and not the kind of guy to embellish things. He told me it was okay to share it with you, as long as I left out some stuff like aliases, towns, and stuff like that. So, here's the story. Hello, my name is Mark. I am a police officer in a small city in the Midwest. Last October, I had a situation happen to me that I cannot really explain. My buddy told me I should share this story with this YouTube page. I am not much for YouTube unless I am trying to figure out how to fix something around my house. He said people that like this page would really take an interest in this story, so here it goes. I will try my best to be as detailed about it as I can. It was early October, and I was doing my normal shift. I work the third shift, and I love it. One of my favorite places to sit is in a parking lot next to a golf course. It is my go-to spot. Some would say it's a hiding spot because I do end up tucked away next to a wooded area. But I am not trying to hide. A highway runs perpendicular to the parking lot. Across the highway is a popular city park. The road the golf course is on has a giant garden and a couple of ponds. It's only 25 miles per hour, but I do not think anyone obeys that speed limit. It is a smart place to sit work-wise because of the highway. There are a lot of bars connected to this highway, so I am always on the watch. The park is close, so I can drive through and check for any kind of disturbances. Also, with the road, the golf course is on, it tends to have a lot of reckless drivers. Like I mentioned before, no one really obeys the speed limit sign. I want to add this here as well, since there are hundreds or so people watching this video. There are a lot of misconceptions about cops. I'm not trying to make a quota. If I pull you over for going 12 to 15 over, I'm doing it for your safety. I also write a lot of warnings. I'm not trying to ruin people's lives by any mean. Same with the people drinking and driving. The last thing I want is to have to pull somebody over for that. Not to sound like a PSA, but please think when you are going out drinking. Have an Uber on call, a designated driver, call a taxi, call a non-emergency. If I am just sitting one night, I'd much rather give you a ride home than you attempt to drive home. We are public servants, after all. We are not as bad as you may think we are. It is for your and other safety. Alright, back to the incident. Well, I went to my favorite spot. Not just work-related, but it is beautiful. There is a very quiet and beautiful stream running behind me through the woods. Far enough away from the main part of the city, so the sky pops. I see all kinds of wildlife, like deer, coyotes, raccoons, foxes, owls, and I could go on and on. They use the golf course to cut through to the ponds. I love the outdoors, camping, hiking, hunting, fishing, you name it, and I've done it all. And I've been doing all of those things since I was just a child. Lots of experience in the woods. Roughly 34 years of it to be exact. I bring this up because this night I saw something I still cannot comprehend. In fact, I still think that I'm mildly crazy. It was roughly 3 a.m., and I just got done making my rounds around the park, and even went out to the pond for just a bit. It was a beautiful night, but also very cold. I remember that weekend was the first time I needed a jacket and a hat. I think because of the cold and the spike in COVID cases, it was especially quiet. I am sitting in the parking lot, trying not to doze off, when I hear a faint voice from the woods I am parked next to. It sounds like a child's voice. I swear it sounded just like my niece who lives in another state. 
I was bewildered. It was 3 a.m., and I hear a child in the woods. I thought maybe I was hearing things, so I rolled down my window to take another listen, and got blindsided by the worst smell I've ever smelled in my life. I dry heaved instantly. I thought it was going to puke. This smell was absolutely rancid. I cannot even accurately describe it. I rolled my window back up, gasping for fresh air. I grabbed my spotlight, reached across my passenger seat, and shined it over towards where I heard the voice. I saw a silhouette of a large buck, a nice size one from what I could see. Not uncommon for around here though. It disappeared back into the woods, but that did not stop me from shining my light. My excitement over the size of that buck trumped the horrible smell outside. I looked for a few more minutes, but I could not find it again. I turned my light off, and to my horror, the buck was at the driver's side window, staring at me. Hunched over on two legs, not four, I screamed. It scared the absolute crap out of me. I looked down to calm myself for just a minute. It just snuck up on me, and his hoofs must be on the car. When I heard a door handle jiggle, I absolutely lost it. Was this thing trying to get into my car? I pulled my flashlight out and shined it on him. In pure shock, I became even more terrified. Part of his face had rotted away. I saw no life in its eye. Its fur or what fur it had left was matted. I was stunned. I tried to be rational about the situation, but it was attempting to pull the door off of my car. After about a minute of trying, he stuck his face up to the glass to look at me. To this day, I cannot get the image out of my head. He grinned at me like this was its intent. Then, with abnormally large arms, it put them together with his hooves and proceeded to double punch, if that's what you would call it, my driver's side window, knocking my car off two wheels. I tried to pull my gun out of the holster, but with the car rocking back and forth and me shaking in fear, I was struggling. So I grabbed what I could, my radio. With my voice shaking, I called dispatch for backup. I tried to explain to Carissa, who was a good friend of mine, that a large buck was attacking my vehicle, and it may be undead. Yes, I literally said that. She laughed, not getting my sincerity. I explained everything I could to the best of my ability, with my voice trembling, and she heard the bang on my car. Rabbit deer attacking police car I have heard over the radio. Uh, I heard sirens in the distance, and so did the buck. As soon as I saw the red and blues, he was gone. What he left were dents in the side of my panel, and I was completely shaken up. I spent about 10 minutes after telling Roger, who was another cop, and he was just confused. By the way, I was shaking. He knew something went down, but he could not really rationally believe me. I don't blame him though. We sat in his car to avoid the smell and went over more of the details. We got a call over the radio for Carissa, saying that we should stay where we were. The DNR was coming to look for this deer. DNR at 3.30 to 4 a.m. in the morning? Yeah, that's how aggressive he was. I was calmed down by them, trying to rationalize everything. He was obviously hurt or something like that. Maybe he got hit by a car. Maybe I was just embellishing his arm length and him jiggling the car handle. The grin, though. I don't know how to explain that so much. Maybe it was when, like, you look at a dog for a bit and they wink at you. No matter how sinister the grin looked, and how much intent maybe it had, it's just hard for me to really, really accept it. Maybe this thing just had a disease, maybe, maybe I just made it up. I was coming up with rational thoughts about everything to make it normal in my head. I was alone, tired, and maybe passed out hearing those noises. My light angered the deer. Maybe that's, maybe that's what happened. Every explainable thing I could think of, I tried to think of. That all changed when the DNR showed up. A van with six DNR agents popped out. I'm an outdoorsman. I have DNR friends. I've been stopped to check my license many times. I have always kind of looked at them as nature's security guard, which I do not mean in any malicious way because I obviously love nature. These guys were different. Almost militarized, it seemed. I could tell they were going after that deer tonight, which was very conflicting as a police officer, because this was in a city still and protecting citizens is the most important aspect of my job. But, while this thing could have killed me, 
It can also hurt other people. If I were in my Nissan Altima, he would have definitely shattered the glass and who knows what. The thing that threw my mind in a never-ending loop was the DNR. I spent the last half hour or so rationalizing everything to myself. No one believed this deer was a zombie or whatever the hell it was. The DNR asked me questions. Where did I see it first? Roughly how big was it? They never once called it a deer, a buck, or an animal. Every question was incredibly direct. Did it talk to you? Had I told anyone about that detail? For about 15 minutes of horror involving this deer or thing, they had a hundred questions. They believed everything I had to tell them. They were straightforward and blunt. Three went into the area he vanished to. The other three got in the van and drove around a bit. I'm assuming kind of like a drive you would do while hunting. I got called back to the station, and they let me go home a little bit early. I could not sleep at all. All day my mind raced. Did this actually happen? The DNR seemed to believe it, but it's not very rational. I did not want to go to work the next day, but at the same time there was a body cam, dash cam, and maybe the DNR bagged it. I can look. I wanted some closure. Not to feel crazy, I get in and I ask to see the footage and somehow it's gone. I was told the DNR confiscated it. I did not know that they could even do that. All evidence was taken by them. I was later told though, they found it, put it out of its misery, and that it was just an aggressive rabid deer. Not to think too much about it. They did not even put it in the paper, that I was attacked by this rabid deer. It just seems like some BS to me, but what can I do? My friend has told me he has heard similar stories on the YouTube channel you run, and I should share. I was never told not to talk about it, but I still feel like I am crazy, and I'd rather stay anonymous. It's been about five months now, and I still think about it almost every single day on an unhealthy level. I have never been that scared or believed a rabid animal or whatever the hell it was would act like that. 34 years of being an outdoorsy guy without any fear of the woods, I don't think I can say that anymore. In July 2015, me and my friend Mike were about to leave for our camping trip to California, which we had been looking forward to for months in advance. We were planning on staying at this family-owned cabin, which my aunt and uncle let us stay at for two weeks. They had given us the key, stocked up on food, and basically gave us all the necessary living supplies for the coming weeks. We would only really have to go to the small town if an emergency happened. My friends and I had done things like camping in the wilderness multiple times, so nobody was worried about us staying there. The layout of the area surrounding the cabin was as followed. It was in a heavily forested area, which was about a 30 minute drive to the nearest town. The cabin was lodged up against the side of this mountain, which looked over this pretty big valley that was completely forested. In the middle of this valley was a beautiful lake, which had a path leading up to it, but it had pretty much been taken over by all the plants growing there. We were really looking forward to fishing and swimming, etc. The road was behind the cabin, and so with a lot of power, you would be able, in theory, to jump over onto the balcony and look up directly into the bedrooms. So, on the first night we arrived, we were nervous. Seeing that we were going to be completely isolated in what was a remote area, but we were also excited. We carried on unpacking and getting the cabin ready for the two weeks to follow. It was late, so we were not planning on going outside that night, so we talked a little bit and eventually fell asleep. The next morning we got ourselves breakfast and went on a two hour hike, exploring around the valley a little bit. When we came back we felt the urge to go hang out around the lake and go for a dip. The time we left it was around 5, so it was a little darker than it was before, but then again it was summer, and we felt comfortable going. We walked down the path in our swimsuits and had a great time at the lake. We came back tired and went to our rooms quickly. That night, when we were both trying to fall asleep, I heard what sounded like footsteps on the road outside. The way my bed was positioned was looking at the balcony. I had closed the curtains, so they obscured my view. But if I had not closed the curtains, I would be looking over at the balcony directly at whatever was walking around the house. It did not freak me out one bit, but whatever was out there walking around was on hooves. So it was pretty much either a deer, or maybe a horse, I don't know but I don't think wild horses are around here at all. 
though it did sound a lot like it was on two legs, not four. It also took half a second between each step. I still was not scared or concerned, but wrote it off as creepy. I fell asleep eventually. The next morning I told Mike about what I had heard, and we kind of laughed it off. I really felt like going fishing today, and Mike was not all that excited about it. So we decided Mike would stay at the cabin preparing a nice dinner, and I would go fishing for the day. I set off walking down the path, which is about 800 meters long. So anyone walking down it is probably on edge like I was. But this was different. As soon as I started walking, I felt an intense amount of dread, and like I was being watched. This only got worse and worse as I went down the path, and by the time I got to the lake, I was close to vomiting from the intensity of the fear. I decided I would just sit down and start fishing, because it was probably just a panic attack or something along those lines. Maybe about 10 minutes into fishing, I heard what sounded like a large animal moving through the forest to my left. It sounded like it was about 30 meters away, but it was just too forested to see. Again, I was not too concerned, but it did unsettle me a little bit. A couple of minutes go by, and I heard what sounded like a literal tree falling over, but behind me. It was literally 15 meters away at most. I jumped up and kind of walked over, not really knowing what to expect. Eventually, I gathered my confidence and walked over to where I heard the sound coming from. There was nothing there. No sign of a tree falling over. Then I look to the right, just kind of scanning into the forest, not seeing anything. Then I go to the left, and I stop. I am looking at what looks like a long, white hand. As in, inhumanly long. It was holding onto the tree. Again, I'm not really too concerned, because whatever this was was definitely not a human hand. I am peeking over to see if it was a plant, or maybe there was just a weird light beam or something that was hitting it. The hand slowly starts to move behind the tree though. At this point, I was already on edge, but now, my fight or flight mode kicked in. I begin jogging back to the beach where my gear is, but then I heard it. Footsteps. Large footsteps sprinting towards me on the beach. I have not even gotten to the beach yet. I am full of adrenaline now, and I am fully sending it down the path into the cabin where Mike is. He immediately asked me what is wrong and if he should call anyone. I told him what I heard and what I saw, and we were both kind of rationalizing it once again. I hear hooves on the asphalt right outside of our cabin. Mike heard it too, and I'm still in full adrenaline mode, but Mike's on edge. We stand there listening when we hear this full-on sprint down the road away from our cabin. At this point, I'm kind of connecting all the dots and rationalizing everything. We were both skeptics, but do not find a logical answer except maybe a disoriented deer that is running around the cabin. We eventually eat up and head to our rooms and try to fall asleep for the night. I heard those same footsteps I had heard probably three times now, and at this point I just feel bad for whatever is going on. This deer sounds so desperate. This changed as it slowly walked up to the front door, under my balcony, slowly around the house. I am on edge again. It goes up the road and it sounds like it jumps, and to my horror, it lands on the balcony. There were no curtains at all at the time, so this thing can look in directly at me. I do not know at this point if this is just my imagination, but the reality is just confirmed as soon as Mike comes into my room asking what the noise was. I shushed him and pointed towards the balcony, where this thing walked up to the window and rubbed up to it. We were both terrified and quietly tiptoed to Mike's room. As we were sitting on Mike's bed, we realized the rubbing had stopped. Nothing else had happened that night. The next morning, we did not really talk about it and decided to sit on the front porch, which looked out over the valley. We had some breakfast and coffee and talked a little bit. After a while, we were looking out over the valley when we saw what looked like trees moving violently from left to right. Remember, these were rather large pine trees which should not be able to move this way. At first, we began to theorize maybe it was people gathering wood, but we soon realized the trees were being moved by something rapidly approaching our cabin. We did not have much time to react as whatever was causing this was now in the tree line. It was a misty day, so we could barely make out the tree line as it was. As we were squinting our eyes, we could clearly make up a slim figure moving towards us. It was pale and white. It wasn't walking. It moved in a way that horrifies me to this day. We stumble inside, lock everything, 
and close every curtain without saying a word. We waited in silence as this creature is pacing up and down our front porch. We had closed the curtains because we had no interest in seeing whatever this thing was. There was light shining in, and the curtains were not too thick, so we could make out a shadow moving left and right before it smashed its skinny arm into our window, five times before seemingly walking back into the tree line. After about ten minutes or so, we felt comfortable to start talking again, and decided we will pack up and get out of there as soon as we could get to my car. As we closed the door of my car, my heart sank. Hooves running over the top of the cabin and landing in the gravel. I smashed the gas pedal, and we just never, ever looked back. That's my story with some sort of demonic creature out there in the woods. This happened in the early 2000s. I was probably only in first grade or so. This was in Bulgaria. I am from a mid-sized town, not too small and not too big. The perfect one for raising your children. Crime is pretty much unheard of here. You can sleep outside on a bench and nothing would happen to you. One weekend, some family friends from a nearby town came to my town to visit and my parents and I decided to go to a national park as they would be called in America. Now, it is important to say that all of the parks in my town are located right at the edge of town, so they are actually more a forest than anything. At some point, the park becomes basically just a forest all itself. Since it is not a very big town, we don't have central parks. In the park that we went to, it runs along a river, so it is very narrow, but it is very long. And on one side there is a river, and on the other there is a thick forest in the cliffs. At the time, I didn't like that park so much because it was a very long walk and you had to walk to get to basically anything. So, like most kids, I got bored of walking with my parents and the other family since they were all just talking about grown-up stuff and I didn't really want to listen to them. I decided to run off ahead, and by ahead I mean out of sight from my parents. Keep in mind that this is a one-alley park, and you only walk straight forward with slight curves due to the river. So I had gone pretty far. Usually. In this park, there are always people, and it is quite crowded on the weekends. But since it was summer, most people were on family vacations, and it was surprisingly empty. I couldn't see anyone in a straight line either way. At that point, I started hearing something in the forest, which was pretty loud. It was on the other side of the river, and it was loud by itself. I stopped and started staring off into the forest, and I saw how the bushes were moving and coming in my direction. I was still pretty clueless as to what was happening, until I saw a freaking man with long hair, a band across his forehead, dressed like a hunter with an air rifle on his back, running at full speed towards me. There was no freezing moment. I just start running in the opposite direction and screaming my lungs out for my parents hoping that they could hear me. But because of the river, I doubt that anyone actually heard me at all. I remember looking backward and seeing him still chasing me, and I was thinking, okay, this is the end. It's over and I was imagining how it would catch me and drag me into the forest, and I would never see my family and friends again. It felt like an eternity, but I finally saw my parents and our family friends. My face was red. I was crying and snotting like crazy, barely breathing. The hunter also stopped running after he saw my parents and the others. I remember my parents started screaming at him, like what the hell was he doing? I don't remember what he exactly said, and I was just relieved that it was over, but I remember him shaking his head, saying something like, I did nothing wrong. I was only trying to help him. The weirdest part was that there was no game in that park. It is a small park after all. All it is is forest, and it's not allowed to be hunted in since it's protected. And about 50 meters away from where we were, there would be cliffs and steep drop-offs. You need to go beyond the park out in the forest to hunt game. Also, it is highly illegal to carry a firearm out in public here. We have very strict laws on firearms in our country. Only police and military personnel are allowed to carry them. I don't know anyone who owns a gun. Civilians are allowed to register only air guns for hunting. No hardcore weapons allowed and of course, you are not allowed to carry them in a park where there are people. Only in regulated zones for hunting game. You would never see hunters like that unless you go to these zones. Or you are in a village, which is still very rare. Now we didn't report it afterward too much of a hassle in my country. This was the first and last time something like that ever happened to me though, which I'm very thankful for. 
I haven't developed a fear from that place. Even now, I go back there and go walking in the woods alone at night. So, I hope everybody stays safe out there, and let this be a warning. <laughs>